even though we're not doing folk stuff in that context either. But I think these words we take, we put a lot of value in them, and we, in many times, I think we hide behind kind of the veil of traditionality or folk, or even modern on the other hand, uh, like we are the entertaining team and we are the traditional team. Um, and we put a lot of value in those, and the, which is my second point, is that I think going off of what you've been trying to say a little bit, Mandeep, about competitions and like a folk competition and a modern competition, I think that's great. I think it's really cool that there are competitions that gear towards certain aspects of the dance, like Bangar and the Berg, for example, right? There's a lot more emphasis on getting judges that think in a certain way, um, you know, they focus more on form and traditionality, and there are other competitions like, um, like WBBC, for example, that focuses on entertainment value and brewing, that focuses on entertainment value. I think the teams that I respect the most, and I think this is kind of the challenge and what will preserve Bangra really, but why are we so focused on like, one team should like get into their style and do their thing? I think that's cool, but isn't it cooler like when a team does their own thing, but then also expands into other things? I think teams should like, why can't, I remember after WBBC, like, people were like, oh man, it was good, but like, come on, I wasn't Bhangra, like, you know, like, come on, let's be honest, like, great, all right, nice, nice, nice magic kunbe, but like, that wasn't Bhangra. And I was like, okay, that's great, yeah. We looked at uh, WBC and tried to shape our performance towards, you know, the, the judges' meetings and all that. But, you know, we also went to Bhangra and the Berg, we also went to like other types of competitions. I know like teams go to DDA and stuff, and if a team can go to one of those kind of competitions and adapt, and show that they can do something outside of their comfort zone. I really respect teams like that. I think teams, uh, some like the Toronto team, some of the, you know, like PCBCA when I was uh, a couple years ago, like Elite Eight, I was like, man, that's like cool. It's like entertaining, but it's like, there's some other stuff going on. Um, I think that is really what it's about. Not just, um, okay, we're just one thing, we did just do this over and over again, and kind of hide behind uh, that, you know, whether it's traditional folk or modern. Um, but hey, let's all jump around a little bit and try to get a better understanding of what we can do. Can we audi offer the audience something here? And, and now taking else? that right into judging, um, there's a few judges here. I know I judge regularly, so is Karen. Um, talking about judging, like judges often get the heat. All oh, the judge just takes the whatever the rubric and just mangles it around, perceives it their own way, and does their own thing, right? Which is not often true. But what if we like there's been talk about this on forums and between teams, but what if there was a Bhangra umbrella? And we've had this conversation, but we can actually have this conversation and move towards having this. Would that work? Like something that standardizes how competitions should be, how judges should judge, what should be looked at, what teams should bring. Would that take away from the individuality of all teams, which I think is lacking from days before. I think a lot of teams, even as a judge, will go to a competition, I get bored. Like, honestly, every team looks like the next team. Every team's Vardi looks like the next team's Vardi because they all order from the same guy in India. Like, I don't know, it just all starts to look the same. <laughs> you know? And like, I honestly, I get bored. Bruin Bhangra was a little bit refreshing, but Bruin Bhangra, I'll be honest, it was like, all right, every team's gonna bring gimmicks. This is Bruin Bhangra. Watch, we're gonna have like the freaking light show and the this and the cool Kunda gimmick. The same stuff gimmicks over and over and over again. And to be quite honest, those gimmicks were done 10 years ago. Man, 10 years ago, gimmicks used to be crazier. Stunts used to be crazier. So what's new? I, I'd hope that every team would keep their own individuality, but do you think that that could still be kept if we had a Bhangra umbrella? It would solve all our judging problems. It would solve all the rubric problems. Ram. Uh, well, I don't think it would solve all our problems. I think it opens up another can of worms because then you have to look at who is directing this umbrella, who is carrying this umbrella, where is it going forward? Um, is everyone going to be on board? Like, these are all questions I can already think of on, off the top of my head. I think in terms of an umbrella, I think there should be more of a feedback in terms of being more transparent about what you're doing. I think the biggest thing with judges, and I think everyone can attest to this, is just being transparent and being open. Something like this, where there's a forum where people can just ask questions and people can respond in a way that is truthful and actually represents how they feel. Um, I know I've been in, I've been, I've been in like 20 judges, judges meetings and I, I hate to hear things like your set was really good and it was really sick and then it's like, but you got fourth and then you ask like, what's the explanation? And you're like, well, your set was really sick and then that doesn't answer anything and you get the same thing over and over again and I think if anything, we just need to be more proactive about being transparent. I think that starts with just the, in, from the individual stage 
and works up through the teams and works up into the competitions. I mean, I, I can tell you right now, um, competitions are very active on BTF, like active in the social community. There's like Facebook, there's like these really nice websites. Um, they have these YouTube videos that they like, Bung and the Berg extols out these uh, videos from past competitions. And, but they rarely ever give feedback or we rarely can give feedback to competitions for fear of like not coming back. Like a big thing, like teams are like, oh, we can't say this competition was bad in terms of like taking us from place to place, unless it was truly awful because they don't want th things to come back. Um, I know, for example, Broom Bungada two years ago, I was chastised because I went up to one of the members and I was like, can we talk to the judges? And it was explicitly stated in the judging rubric or like judging packet that, you know, we can't do that. We can't approach the judges in any way. And it's like, you can't be transparent, you can't progress forward without getting all the facts. And I think, um, not necessarily like setting style, but setting like a direction and like a thought process about um, how we should approach things in a professional manner is a thing that we should look forward to, not how we should all be dancing. And also not be afraid to voice your opinion. Like if you don't agree with something, how is an organization gonna know that if you, if you didn't tell me this panel didn't work, how would I know it's not gonna work in the future? I don't think as teams, we should be afraid. And essentially, like when girls weren't supposed to do Bhangra, like you wouldn't believe the comments we'd hear, man. Like I remember we did DDA in 2003, and to a standing ovation. And what did I hear from six judges? It's, quote unquote, it's unorthodox for girls to do Bhangra. You know, if boys had done the same thing you did, they would have won. So if I sat there quiet, afraid I was never going to be invited to the ADA again, freaking girls bring out wouldn't be where it is today. We didn't fight the fight. It, this evolution wouldn't have happened. So it always, I'm always personally surprised that people hold back on really providing positive criticism to these competitions, these organizations, which in essence are fueling the way we perceive Bhangra. Look at us, we're talking about folk Bhangra, we're talking about modern Bhangra, we're talking about, you know, apples, oranges, this, that. But we need to be able to speak up and have forums like this and speak to these competitions. These competitions, if you're a competition organizer, should have the avenue for people to be able to provide constructive criticism, which brings me to forums such as BTF. It's very positive, and I think it works because people can talk to each other and comment, provide great criticism. Uh, going back to the next uh, thing we were talking about was forums. Um, they have a very positive effect, but they can have a reverse effect. Anybody? Um, so tying this question in as well, back, well, kind of back to the last one. I personally feel that um, when you have judges that are active members of the BTF community, you introduce a lot of personal bias. I mean, we hear, I mean, I'm obviously a very big fan of modern dancing. I probably wouldn't be the best person to be a judge simply because I would place a lot more value on entertainment. Um, similarly, I don't think some of the more traditionally vocal people here would be excellent judges either, simply because they've been introduced to this forum where they've expressed a lot of personal bias. In today's judging scene, you have people that will write pages and pages of attacks on a team and then turn around six months later and decide on the quality of their dancing. I, I think that's extremely unfair and unethical. I don't understand how we're supposed to promote a more transparent community when we're doing things like pages and pages of negative reviews and negative personal bias about how one team is too folk or one team is too modern or somebody's doing Bollywood or somebody is killing Bhangra. And, then you're taking those people who have those personal views and putting them in a position of power where they're actively deciding based on those personal biases who should win a competition, who should not. I think one of the great things that older competitions did, and maybe this was a, fact, a facet of the fact that BTF didn't exist or Punjab Online was very new at the time, was that when you had judges, they were removed from the scene. And I think that would be an excellent rule for us to follow in our generation to create a higher standard for excellence that you can't be active in BTF for five years and then go back with a clean mind, no personal bias, no grudges against your arch rival of the last five years, and then go back and revisit the judging scene. It also gives you a fresh new perspective to go back with. You don't have this stigma in your head of traditional, modern, and you can go back and not be biased in any way. Thanks. But um, there's, you're going to have people on the other side of that who are going to be like, you know what, we would rather have someone who is not currently active in the scene, but has only been like, you know, in and out for like the last year or two years because they understand 
what's currently happening in the scene. Yes, it's great to have dancers who, you know, haven't been in the scene for five, six years. But like, honestly, five, six years ago, the scene was completely different than it is. And I understand that it's like a double edged sword that on one side, yes, if you have them like, and they interact with other teams and there is sometimes a bias clear that scene. But at the same time, like, you know, I've judged with judges who used to be on like Cornell, like 2000, like 1990, whatever. And then just the things that they look at, just, <laughs> sorry, Karthik, but just like the things that, <laughs> just the things that they look at and the way that they judge the teams is completely different than even how the teams want to be judged as. Okay, um, Ram? Well, um, so I think it's a double edged sword, uh, bringing up the whole being outside of BTF for five years. Um, because I think you can also make the statement that people tend to judge based on what they experienced and what they like. And uh, it's very hard to certainly like eliminate bias in that sense. Um, I think we're looking at it the wrong way in terms of, I guess, immersion into the, the Bunga community. I think what really needs to happen is we need to, do, we need to take steps to make sure that if there is bias, we can voice it, we can clearly see it happening and then try our best to eliminate it as a community. I think um, we have great power in numbers and great power in the fact that we can use a tool like BTF or we can easily just, you know, use a tool like a book like a in a competition and be like, look, you know, we want the truth behind why you judge us this way. And I think an issue, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I've judged recently, and I, I mean, I'm still on a, dan on, a dan on a team, and I think uh, the big thing that I was afraid of isn't necessarily that, not even the judging of the teams itself, but making sure that every team knows exactly why I judge them a certain way. And I think teams, judges, competitions, we do a lot of <coughs> brown nosing in the sense that we, we just tell people what they want to hear and not tell people what they should hear. And in the opposite cases, we just, work, we just focus on things that are negative and things that aren't constructive. A lot of times you see, you see reviews on BTF, you see people giving feedback, and it was just like, that sucked. And that is the worst thing you can tell anybody. Uh, I've, you know, part of what I have to do, I, I teach kids um, on the weekends, and uh, I, I can't go, like, when they're first learning something, I can't go up to them and be like, that sucked. 